Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. In this video, we're gonna explore the box product. It's a product involving three vectors. You can see here, it actually involves two different kinds of products to calculate. We've got both a dot product and a cross product here. This box product is also called the triple scalar product, partly because its calculation involves using three vectors. Let's also take a look at what kind of answer we expect to get from this operation before we do it based on our knowledge already of dot products and cross products. So you can see we've got these parentheses over here on the right. So just like always, that's telling us to compute this part first. And remember that when we take the cross product of two vectors, that operation is going to give us a vector as an answer. So we know that V cross W, this part gives us a vector. After we do this cross product, you can see we're then going to take u dot whatever we got in the parentheses, right? In other words, we're now taking a vector dot another vector. And we should remember that the dot product of two vectors is going to give us a scalar, right? So our answer is going to be a real number for this entire box product operation. It'll be a scalar. So now you can see if we get a scalar, you can sort of see the full story on why this box product is also called the triple scalar product. You can obviously just do this box product like we just said. First you could take the v cross w, figure out that vector, and then you could take u dot whatever you get. So you could do two operations, but we're going to actually show you a nice little shortcut that you can use to do this all in one go here. So just sort of watch for a minute as we get the formula we're going to use here, and then you'll see how it's easiest to do it all in one shot. So if we write out our vectors in terms of their components, right? So I have u1, u2, u3 dot v cross w here, right? And I've got all the components. Computing the cross product, first part, would give you this somewhat lengthy formula for v cross w, right? And then taking the dot product with u, each of those components from the cross product would be multiplied by components from u, and then we'd add them all together. If you're familiar with the cross product already, which we hope you are, you might be getting deja math right now, looking at this, because this, it turns out, is just the formula for a cross product, but with the components of u in place of i hat, j hat, and k hat that we normally have when we just do the cross product of two vectors. So this formula can actually be calculated, this entire thing can be calculated all in one shot using our determinant method that we showed you in our cross product video in the video series, only instead of having i hat, j hat, and k hat for the first row, we just have vector u instead. So this is really nice. We already know how to do this likely from cross products. Here it's just a slight adaptation of the first row. So let's take an example and use our shortcut that we just figured out. So if we want to find our box product, in other words, u dot v cross w, given we have the vectors u is 1, 2, 3, v is 1, negative 1, 1, and w is 2, 0, negative 1. So again, remember you could do this, first do v cross w and figure all that out, and then take your answer from that and do u dot whatever you got for your answer. But like we said before, we're just going to do this all in one shot. So our triple scalar product, our box product, is just putting all of these in in the correct order. So u goes in first, then put v in second. The third row is going to be w because they're written in that order there. So we just find this three by three determinant. Instead of i hat, j hat, and k hat, we have entries one, two, and three. So we'll take our first entry, which is one. We cross out our row and column that one is in expanding the first row here, and we get these four entries left over. So we're gonna have one times our two by two determinant, which is negative one, one, zero, negative one. Remember we used to do minus j hat here, so this time we'll do minus two now. Crossing out the row and column that two is in, we have leftover entries one, one, two, negative one. So our determinant that is two by two here will be one, one, two, negative one. We used to do plus k hat, now we do plus whatever's here, so plus three. Remember we alternate signs here, right? Minus, then plus. So three cross out the row and column that three is in. We have one, negative one, two, zero. So one, negative one, two, zero. And now we just compute this, right? So equals one times this diagonal here, negative one times one would be one. 
minus this diagonal here, 0 times 1 would be 0, minus 2, and now we do this determinant, so 1 times negative 1 would be negative 1, minus this diagonal, 2 times 1 would be 2, plus 3 times this determinant here, 1 times 0 would give us 0, minus 2 times negative 1 would be negative 2, so this would actually be minus negative 2, we'll call it plus 2. And now if we do some multiplication here, 1 times 1 gives us 1. This would be negative 3 times negative 2, which would be plus 6. And then we have 3 times 2, so plus another 6 is actually going to give us 13. Or our box product here, our triple scalar product, u dot v cross w. Let's take a look now at the geometric meaning of a box product here and what it can tell us. So if we have two vectors v and w, and they're non-parallel, then v and w give us two adjacent sides of a parallelogram we said before. So then if we also have some vector u that isn't in the same plane as vectors v and w, then we can construct a type of box that has parallelograms for all its sides based on these vectors u, v, and w being all adjacent vectors. They all meet at one corner, you can see, of our box. If we want to find the volume of this box, then we could do so by finding the area of the parallelogram base and multiplying that by the height of our box. In our previous video in the series about using cross products to find area, remember we showed how the magnitude of the cross product of v and w gives us the area of parallelogram. So this base here, our formula becomes the magnitude of v cross w, that's the area of our base, times whatever the height is of this box. To find the height of the box, we'll use the idea we've already mentioned in our video series about scalar projections. So we know that the cross product of v and w is going to give us a vector that's orthogonal to the plane that contains v and w. It's going to point straight out of the plane according to the right-hand rule. In our picture here now, the height of this box shape will be the scalar projection of vector u in the direction of our vertical vector v cross w. So we'll fill this in for the height in our formula, and now let's see what we might be able to do to this idea to simplify it a bit. So remember, the scalar projection of a vector on another vector is the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of the vector we're projecting onto. So in this case, the height of our box is u dot v cross w divided by the magnitude of v cross w. Since you can see there are magnitudes that reduce each other here, then we really are simply left with our box product as the simplified version of this volume. There is, however, one small problem that might occur. So depending on the orientation and order in which these three vectors are arranged, it's possible that we could get a negative answer here because this is a dot product. And remember, dot products can be negative. So if we just want to find a box product, u dot v cross w, then a negative answer is okay. But if we're actually looking for a physical volume, then we would need to consider the absolute value of this box product to be sure we have the correct answer for the volume of this box here. By the way, the name for this type of box here, it's actually called a parallelopiped, is the name of this box. So let's work an example here. We want to find the volume of the parallelopiped defined by adjacent edges, and we have three vectors here, u, which is negative 2, 3, 1, v, which is 0, 4, 0, and vector w is negative 1, 3, 3. And so remember the idea here is to find u dot v cross w, and the way we'll do that is simply using our 3 by 3 determinant shortcut. So that's going to be the determinant of negative 2, 3, 1, 0, 4, 0, and negative 1, 3, 3. If we go ahead and compute this then, expanding our first row, we'll have negative 2 times the 2 by 2 determinant if I mark out the row and column that negative 2 is in which is 4, 0, 3, 3. We usually do minus j hat, so here we're doing minus the next entry 3. Marking out the row and column that the 3 is in, we get 0, 0, negative 1, 3 left over. 
So our two by two determinant is based on zero, zero, negative one, three, plus k hat usually, but here it's plus one times the determinant with the entries left if we mark out the row and column there, zero, four, negative one, three, so zero, four, negative one, three here. We'll go ahead and figure this out. So this will be negative two, times 4 times 3 will give us 12, minus 3 times 0, which is 0, minus 3 times 0 times 3 here is 0, minus negative 1 times 0, which is also 0, plus 1 times 0 times 3 would be 0 there, minus negative 1 times 4 would be negative 4, minus negative 4 would be like plus 4 there. So we would actually get negative 24 minus 0 and then plus 4, right? So we would actually get an answer of negative 20 for our box product. And if we were just calculating a box product straight away, negative 20 would be our answer. But since we're finding a physical quantity, a physical volume that should not be negative, then we'll go ahead and find the absolute value of negative 20, which is of course positive 20, and that is the volume for our parallelopiped, our box object here. Here's one final example of how to use the box product. We want to show that the vectors u, v, and w are coplanar. In other words, they all lie in the same plane. So let's think about what we could use. We know that two non-parallel vectors define a plane. I think you can tell looking at these that none of these are exact multiples of another one here. So we know that two of these vectors define a plane, right? So as we drew before with our parallelopiped, let's kind of think of this, we started with V and W as a base, a parallelogram, and then vector U gave us some height for our box. So if vector U instead lies in the same plane with V and W, so it's not going to give us any height for our box, right? So a box with no height would have no volume, and we should expect to get a box product of zero here. I mean, it's possible that it's width or depth instead of its height that's zero, depending on how we look at it in 3D space, but the big idea is that one of the dimensions is going to be zero if all three of these lie in the same plane. So we should get a volume of zero. So let's make sure that this happens here with our u, v, and w. So if we want to find u dot v cross w, and again, we'll do it with our same three by three determinant we did before. We'll take the absolute value, but if we get zero, the absolute value of zero is still gonna be zero. So we don't need to worry about that too much here, but we're going to have our three by three determinant with three, four, eight, two, zero, zero, and four, one, two. Let's go ahead and calculate this. So expanding our first row, we'll take three. We mark out the row in column three is, we have zero, zero, one, two left over. So times that two by two determinant, minus where j hat normally is, we'll have minus four though. Times if we mark out the row in column four is in, we get two, zero, four, two left over. 2, 0, 4, 2, plus k hat normally, but here we have 8 instead of k hat, so 8 times 2 by 2 determinant, mark out the row and column 8 is in, 2, 0, 4, 1 is what's left. All right, so now we go ahead and calculate 3 times 0 times 2 would be 0, minus 1 times 0 would be 0, minus 4, times two times two would be four, minus zero times four would be zero there, plus eight times diagonal here, two times one, minus four times zero would be zero. And you can see we get three times zero, so this is zero here. We get negative four times four, that's negative 16, and then plus eight times two would be plus 16, right? So we get negative 16 plus 16. We do get a box product of zero. Obviously if we take the absolute value of zero, we still get zero there. And so because we get a volume of zero, we know that they all lie in the same plane. They're all coplanar. All right everyone, hopefully this helps you with your box products and your parallelopipes and your volumes. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.